Let's look at another example of technology that's bettering our world. Light cell energy is a good example of this. And uh, let me read this really briefly. <clears throat> but developed by Danielle Fong, uh, it is light cell is a technology as efficient as batteries. It will supposedly return up to 70% of the energy put into it, uh, but significantly cheaper. I'll link this article and then the company here. I want to point out something is, so my dad uses solar power to power his home. And one of the things that he told me is a huge challenge is storage. You, there's not an effective solution to store that energy. So when people talk about green energy, and I live in Texas, and we have wind power, we are looking at solar power, Texans are really excited about green energy because we want to be off of oil ourselves, even though we have a lot of oil. But it's just Texans, we like to solve problems. The problem, though, with a lot of this green energy is storage. And if you can get a solution to store the energy effectively, you'll get those disproportionate returns. So um, this technology that will supposedly return up to 70% of the energy put into it would be a huge win. My dad, especially someone who uses solar power, would just love that because if you only are able to store 20% of the energy that you collect, you're, you're not really, you're not generating that much of a return. Also, there was a, a young individual, I believe a 12-year-old boy who developed solar technology that used water that would get even more energy. But again, you can get a lot of energy from solar, but if you can't store it, you're back to the same problem, right? It doesn't matter how much you can get from the energy, it matters how much you can store it. And so this is an example they use on their site, and I'll link their site too. Um, electricity prices skyrocket on a hot day in Texas, that is true. But what if with wind and solar you could, you could store it more cheaply and you could deliver it more cheaply when it's needed? Uh, and of course they talk about there's more profit for wind and solar farms, but really what that means is the consumer, right? If you can, if you can store more of that energy, the consumer ends up winning, right? So if you go to West Texas especially, you'll see all kinds of wind power. But one of the, the downsides to a lot of those wind power is, again, storing that energy. If we can store that energy effectively, um, you can really disrupt the cost of energy in the sense that energy for everyone um, will be a lot cheaper. So this is an example of a huge solution to a problem. A lot of people don't realize energy is one of the bottlenecks right now to solving water problems. We can't really solve water problems because we need a lot more energy to solve the water problem. And so working on the water problem is useful, yes, but we need um, energy solutions. And as you see, Danielle Fong is a good example of someone who, if we can get a 70% storage rate, uh, yeah, people will be really excited about that. And then that green energy that we're getting from these wind farms like in Texas and solar power and maybe even geothermal, that will really start to have impacts on lower cost for consumers. Maybe in the future, you know, even the poor middle class, everyone will be paying, let's say, a penny a month for their electric bill. That would be awesome. Think about how that increases, how I'm sorry, how that lowers the cost of living, but the standard of living stays the same. People are able to get more energy with less money. It's the whole point purpose of building that better world.